Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, before we get going, let me just make sure that everyone can hear me and see the visuals on the screen. Um, if you can answer in the affirmative in the chat box, that will be great. Okay, perfect. Um, before we get started, I just uh, sort of want to mention out of the gate, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat today, so uh, apologies for that ahead of time. Also, if at any um, given point during the webinar, you know, you, you run into some tech issues or something like that, um, we should have a recording available um, afterwards, so you can always, you know, come back and review that, um, you know, if you were to run into any kind of trouble. Um, so, uh, with that out of the way, um, let me start by thanking you for attending today's webinar. Um, if you're here, it's probably because you're a new coach or you're an established coach, you know, looking to pick up uh, more sessions. Um, now, since the beginning of the year, we've added four new partner colleges to our growing list of colleges and, and universities, which means, you know, more students looking for sessions and therefore more opportunities for you as a coach. So, you know, today the aim of this um, webinar is to look at four strategies that you can do or use to do just that. Um, First up, what we'll do is look at how you can create an eye-catching profile. Um, now, when it comes to your profile, the very first aspect to look at is your profile photo. Now, you know, as a student scrolls through the list of available coaches for a given subject, the first thing that's going to catch their eye will be a coach's profile photo. Um, now, however, much like a book is judged by its cover, a coach's profile is often going to be judged by its photo. Now, what you want is for your name to stand out um, or for your profile to stand out when a student is scrolling through the list of available coaches. Now, to make sure that happens, to make sure the student notices your name, what you want to do is upload a photo that meets the following requirements. First one is that you want a colorful and well-lit photo. I see this quite often when I look through coach profiles. You have um, photos that are, you know, either sort of, um, of, of of poor, you know, they've sort of got a very poor color palette, or they're underlit. Um, there's a lot of shadows on them, and you can't really see the coach's face. Now, right out of the gate, that doesn't create such a great impression. The the next thing you want is a medium or close-up shot. You really want, um, you know, your student to be able to see you and, you know, sort of, you know, who you are. Um, what you don't want is, you know, a picture of a car cartoon character or some kind of an avatar. Um, or, you know, a, a needlessly long shot where you're maybe in the frame, but um, you sort of just a figure in the distance. I've seen a few of those on coach profiles um, as well, and, you know, you really don't want that. Um, and then the third thing is a, you know, this is sort of self-evident, but it's a friendly smile. Um, you really want to present yourself as amiable and amicable, um, as someone that um, is, easy, is easy to approach and someone, you know, that is easy to work with. Um, so if you um, if you put um, you know these three things together, that's the first step that you that you can make towards you know your profile standing out. The next thing has to do with your about me bio. It's really a very important selling point. Now what you want here is don't be afraid to promote yourself here. You want to lead with your strong points. Um, in other words, what makes you a great tutor. Um, effective strategies here are to um, combine um, strong verbs with strong nouns and adjectives and to highlight your qualifications and your achievements. You also want to make sure that your information here is grammatically correct and correctly punctuated and capitalized. Because you, you want to remember that apart from your photo, this is the very first information about you that any student will see. Now you'll see that this is, this is my own personal bio that I have on my profile. Um, I've got a whole list of things, you know, list of their things I've taught in the past, you know, my qualifications, um, and I've sort of taken care to use, you know, fairly strong verbs, and nouns, and adjectives. This might sound like a bit of overkill, but you know, trust me, it works. You, you students really do base their intentions um, on what they see. Okay, so the second part um, of today's webinar that I want to talk about is how you may know more subjects than you think. Now, part of being a successful coach and upstream is specializing in a range of subjects in order to service a broad subset of students. Um, upstream currently serves more than half a million students in over 300 subjects. Now, we know that not every coach can coach in every subject. 
Um, everyone has a specialization and you know that is as it should be. Um, however, while you may, for example, see yourself as an English coach, you can also make yourself available for expository writing, for literature courses and developmental writing. Um, and in addition to that, um, you can also help with SAT and ACT questions. Now, that is especially true at this time of the year as students begin preparing to take the spring exams. They're looking for coaches who can help them. Um, and if you are an English or a math coach and you haven't added um, you know, test prep subjects to your profile, um, you won't be able to show up as available to those students. Now, to do that, what you can do is you can go to your profile. You can scroll down to the, the skills section um, and you can click on edit. That is going to take you to um, the add subject sec section. Once you're there, you can click on test prep. You'll find it sort of in the lower right hand corner. And that should take you to high school. And once you click on high school, you'll be looking at ACT and SAT. You can go ahead and click those and then you know scroll back up and click done as you're all familiar with. Um, now another good example where this applies is nursing. Um, Many people have studied in topics that are required for nursing, including pharmacology, chemistry, and so forth. But if you only selected chemistry sort of under the general subjects on, on your option profile, you may not show up to someone um, who's looking for help in nursing specifically. Um, now, an example here is that you can click on health science, which is a broad sort of skill category. You can then go down to nursing. And from there, you can, for example, click on anatomy and physiology. Um, now, this, this is for you know, a coach with a background in biology. Someone like that would be a good fit for a student who, need, who needs help on this kind of subject. You know, and the same applies to you know, Spanish for health or uh, even mental health. If you're a Spanish or a psychology tutor or if you've got a background in either of these subjects and you feel comfortable tutoring them, then this is something um, that would be particularly useful for you, especially since we're continually adding uh, you know, new nursing schools as upstream partners. Um, now, um, basically, my advice here is that instead of just um, you know, sticking with the subjects that you have or sort of just looking at general categories where you feel comfortable, go and look around um, under the skills um, you know, sort of categories and go into them, explore them, and see if there's anything, for example, in the case of health sciences and nursing that would apply to you as well and click those. Um, another example is if you were to look at math. Now, if you only show to students that you can do the really hard math subjects such as calculus, you may be uh, missing out on a, a ton of students who are looking to help, you know, for help in subjects like geometry, algebra, and basic math, all of which, you know, calculus is built upon. So, you know, if, if you've got a, a sort of an, an umbrella category, a math category that you're strong in, try and see if there are, you know, smaller subjects and skill sets that, that you know, um, feed into that category and select those as well. Okay, so the, the third thing I want to talk about has to do with updating your pricing. Now, as I mentioned earlier, and as you might know, especially as an established coach, um, when a student browses a site for a coach, they see um, a list of coaches who coach in a particular subject, and it looks something like this. Um, I see Dan's profile is here. I think Dan is in the, uh, is in the uh, in attendance today. So, hey, Dan, a little shout out to you there. Um, basically, this is the kind of thing that, you, that, that a student sees. Um, and you'll notice that the coaches on this list appear in a, a, a vertical order. And so your next question is going to be, well, how is this list ordered? The way it works is that we use a ranking algorithm to order the list. The algorithm weighs a number of factors and then it sorts the list based on the cumulative outcome. So what goes into the, into the algorithm? The first thing we look at is the coach's affiliation. Coaches who work directly for one of our partner colleges are ranked higher than upstream coaches. 
However, for the most part, colleges who make use of their own coaches don't also make use of upstream coaches. So as an upstream coach, this doesn't really affect you. Um, the second thing um, that is, you know, quite important for this algorithm um, is whether you're immediately available for a session. Um, if that is the case, you'll find yourself ranking much higher than coaches who aren't immediately available. Um, this is true even for new coaches with no student ratings yet. So if you're a new coach and you're looking to stand out from the crowd and pick up sessions, use the available now switch and spend some time on the site if you can. You'll also note that um, it says their rating under number three. Now that refers to a student rating. Um, obviously, if, if you receive high ratings from your students, say five star or four star ratings, that is going to influence um, the, the ranking algorithm and it's going to influence where you place on the list of coaches. Um, I'm going to speak to that a little bit more in a second. Um, now, I also need to talk about the hourly rate. Um, that that influences um, has quite a big impact on your on your ranking and um, once all of these things are factored in um, if coaches have the same ranking and, and they should be placing on the same place on the list what happens is we sort them alphabetically um, and then you see the list that a student will see now um, this part of the webinar really focuses on updating your pricing um, but it also ties directly in with the next part, so I'm going to speak to them, same, um, to them both at the same time. Now, the upstream team refers to this as one click to rule them all. And um, really what it comes down to is using combinations of factors wisely. As a new coach, you're your own micro, micro um, entrepreneur. Um, and just like any new business that opens for the first time, you have to earn the reputation and attention you seek. Now, to do so, you can use a combination of the factors weighed in the ranking algorithm. Um, the first of these is immediate availability. This really is the biggest factor um, with the biggest um, influence on your ranking. Um, coaches, or excuse me, students are often online at odd hours of the day, um, and when they come online, they, on, they you know, often want instant gratification. Um, they don't want to schedule a session an hour away or even half an hour away. They are now. Um, they want help now. And so if you're immediately available, firstly, your name is going to go either to the top of the list or it's going to rank very high on the list that a student sees. Um, often students don't want to scroll all the way down to, you know, to the bottom of the list. So if they see your name right at the top and you've got a good photo up there and um, you know, um, a good biography, um, it's very likely that they're going to click on your name. The second thing is to use a lower introductory price. Now, this is specifically true, um, you know, it's rather um, especially true for for new coaches. Um, often, if you start out, you know, you want to stand out from the crowd. So, how do you go about doing that? Especially if you haven't yet received any student ratings to affect your ranking. One thing you can do is to you know, start with a lower hourly rate. Um, and then once you've had a few sessions and you've received good ratings from students, you can move your price back up again without overly affecting your ranking. Um, that obviously remains true um, for, for new coaches or for established coaches as well. Um, if, you, if you've been struggling to find sessions, try this out, see how it works, you know, get your rankings up a bit. Um, the other thing that happens is too that once you've worked with a, with a few students, more often than not, those students will come back to you um, and you'll build out a nice little client base um, and you'll have regular sessions um, over the course of a semester. Um, and then the one last thing that you really can do is, you know, when you do a session, make sure it's a great session um, and make sure that you get a great rating for that session. Um, you could also ask students to leave you a rating. Don't be shy to do this. Um, students often simply just miss the feedback prompt without thinking to leave any feedback. And this isn't because they, you know, didn't have a good experience or they don't want to leave you a rating. They're often just in a hurry or they simply just, you know, don't realize that this is something they can do. They just click outside the box and they just miss the prompt and that's that. Um, but if you felt you delivered a great session, don't hesitate to ask the student to leave you some feedback. Um, if a student comes back to you and they say, 
um, you know what, um, I wanted to give you some feedback, but I didn't quite know how it worked, or I accidentally dismissed the prompt. What you can tell them is they can go to the sessions page um, on their profile. It looks very much like the sessions page um, on a coach's profile. They can go, they can navigate to the session in question, and they'll see the word submit next to that session. And they can click on that, and they can basically submit feedback after the fact. Um, so that's another good way to make sure that we get a rating and some feedback. Um, so really, if you tie all of these together, um, these are things that you can do um, to help yourself get more sessions, to stand out, um, to really look attractive on the list of um, coaches that are available, and also to rank as high as you possibly can um, on that list. Okay, so that's um, pretty much everything I had to say on that for today. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the floor to some questions. Um, what you can do is if you've got a question, just uh, feel free to type it in the um, uh, in the chat box, and uh, I will take them from there and respond via the audio feed. Okay, so our first question in there is from Justine. How can we go about viewing feedback from students without sessions with? Um, Justine, we currently don't have that um, available as a, you know, as a piece of functionality. So there's nowhere on your profile that you can go to to see you know, the kind of feedback that students have left, uh, um, have left you. Um, we know that that's a bit of an inconvenience. It's something we're working on. Um, in the meantime, what you can do is just send me an email if you want to see some of your feedback, and I can compile that for you and send it back to you. Um, the next question is, um, if a student requests an, an appointment past your available time, what should you say? Um, that isn't technically possible at the moment, um, unless, of course, you've made yourself available for an immediate session. Um, the way it works is that um, if you have a set range of availability on your profile, the student can only schedule sessions within that range of time. And they can't schedule outside of it. Um, so really, um, if you've made yourself available, then you know you should be able to accept all sessions. If, however, you're online um, and you've been immediately available for the whole evening, and you're about to log off, and then suddenly you get you know a last-minute um, session request, you know, and you can't take it, um, the best thing to do is just to ask the student, you know, explain the situation, say that you were uh, um, about to log off. Um, and um, that you would love to help, but um, you know, ask if they would like to reschedule, you know, perhaps for tomorrow or whenever you're available again. Um, and you can do this via the the the, um, the message function on the site, of course. Um, and if if the, if the student is okay with that, you know, go ahead and reschedule. And if they're kind of in a hurry and then, and they don't want to reschedule, then what you can do is just um, say, you know, well, um, I'm sorry that this, this isn't going to work out, but um, you know, feel free to go and look at some of the other coaches on the list. Um, Dan, yes, um, we've we've noticed that too. Um, it's something that the tech team is working to it's working to eliminate. Um, it's a bit of an issue. Um, what happens is if you you know request an immediate session, or if a student requests an immediate session, then and they request it for an hour. Once the session time runs past that hour mark, um, you become available again. And then what ends up happening is you know another student can see that you're online and available, and they can uh, request a session. Um, it's until we get that, you know, ironed out. Um, the best thing to do is just to be, you know, sort of cognizant of it, um, you know. And you know, I don't want to say don't don't let your immediate sessions run over an hour, um, but you know, obviously you can run up to 90 minutes. That's the session limit. So if you do get a session request and during that time, 
um, what we can do is to see if we can wrap up with the um, with the with the student that we in a session with at that time, um, and then you know go ahead and accept the next one, start that one. Um, or the other thing you can do is you know as soon as you've got an immediate session request um, and you've accepted it, um, just go back to your profile page and, and disable the available now switch. Um, and then once you finish that immediate session, you can go back again and enable the switch again, and you know that way you can sort of avoid getting overlapping session requests. Uh, yeah, Justine, you can definitely do that. Um, if you just go to the upstream main site, upstream.io, um, you can you can just have a look around there, and you'll find the um, our list of partners. So I'll see if I can drag a link down here for you. Here we go. If you go to um, opportunity.io slash partners, um, that should you know, give you a nice breakdown of all the, the uh, schools that we're currently partnering with. Um, we also have a number of schools in the, in the, you know, in the pipeline at the moment. Um, so you know, things are moving quickly and we're growing very fast. Um, so there'll be more and more students coming online this year as well. Um, Kelly, to, to change your price, what you do is you, know, you go to your main profile. Um, on your profile, you'll see um, a section called billing. Let me see if I can find the right link for you on that, so I, I don't tell you the wrong thing. All right, so on your main profile, you'll see profile info and you'll see account info. If you click account info and then scroll right down to the bottom, you'll see um, a box called billing info. And if you click on change, then you can update your pricing there. Um, Monica, there are a number of videos available on the student site that they can that they can um, watch. They can also, um, if they just go to the main site, um, they should be able to get help there. Um, they can also there's a there's a section on on the like it is on the coach's profile where you can click. Um, there's, there's there's a little icon of a you know question mark and says questions. Now if you click on that. Um, they, there are some there's some guides there. You can click through on that. There'll be a link to to more information as well. Um, the the best thing that you can do in a, in a situation like that as a coach, especially since you're in a session and, and you don't want to waste too much time, you know, um, for the student to go and look at you know a how-to video or anything like that, is you can just walk them through how to use the platform. Um, that's usually very you know very useful. Um, now, to prepare yourself for that kind of thing, um, the best thing to do is to go to the Coach Resource Center, um, and you'll find that um, right in the center of your profile um, when you log in. What we've got there is a comprehensive um, source of um, FAQs, session protocols and policies, how to use you know, information on um, how payment works, um, and just, just general things about the platform. So basically, once you've worked through all that, you should be fully prepared to, you know, help a student through uploading um, a document or anything like that. Um, Leslie Ann, it sounds like you were traveling between time zones, is that right? I 
Okay, so the you know the system does try to you know accommodate you on that, but it can get a little tricky. Um, especially what really needs to happen is if you know you work in say Central Time, um, and then you know the next day or the last time you logged in, you were on Central Time, and then the next time um, you know where you're looking to log in, you're in Eastern Time. The system is only going to update um, your time zone preference once you've actually logged in again. So if you travel out of Central Time to say Eastern Time, you want to make sure that you log in you know, well before um, your next session is due to start, um, because the system is going to think you're still on Central Time, and they're going to send that. The system's going to send your, um, you know, has a notification your session is about to start in an hour. That email is going to come at the wrong time for you. So when you travel to a new time zone, make sure that you log into the site you know as soon as possible just to update, so that it can auto update and it can know where you are in time and send those notifications at the right time. All right, I think we've got time here for one or two more questions if anyone's got a, a burning question that we wanted to ask for a while. Okay, it doesn't look like we're going to get any more questions today, so uh, I'm going to leave it there. Um, of course, if at any point you know you do have questions, most of you know this by now, you can just email me um, at pierre at upstream .io. Um, You know, I, I generally try to get it back to you as soon as I can, um, so please feel free to um, to email me. You can, of course, also go via the help desk. Um, you know, those queries are generally just forwarded my way as well, so if you sort of want to um, um, uh, you know, sort of get it straight from the horse's mouth. Just uh, go ahead and email me, and I'll, um, I'll try to answer those questions for you. Um, and other than that, I just want to say thank you, uh, you know, for attending today. Um, and I'm hope, I hope that this was useful for you, and that um, you know you'll get some good mileage out of it going forward. Um, I can also add that you know over the last two weeks we had our busiest two weeks um, in in about two years. So that really speaks to the number of students um, that are coming online and using the service um, and how popular it's become. Um, so really, there are a lot of sessions to be had. Um, so I, th I think that if you can apply um, the things we talked about today, you should stand a very good chance of getting you know, um, lots of sessions um, and doing pretty well on the platform. So uh, again, thank you for attending today. And uh, thank you all for the great work that you do on the platform. We really do appreciate it. Um, and we're very lucky to have all of you on board. All right then, well thanks very much for today and uh, have a great day further.